the, this is the, the only recognized genocide that took place on the European soil after the Second World War, when the whole world said never again, it happened again in Bosnia. In 1995, the international community, led by NATO and the U.S., gathered to end a tragedy, ethnic cleansing during the collapse of Yugoslavia. This resulted in the Dayton Accords, a peace agreement ending the Bosnian War. Although initially hailed as a triumph in the eyes of the international community, the Accords did not offer solutions for ethnic tension, igniting ethnic violence and sparking a refugee crisis in Kosovo. This tragedy of neglect cemented NATO intervention policy, continuing the Bosnian precedent of military peacekeeping in times of violent political instability. After World War II, the modern Yugoslavia was created as a social state comprised of six republics. Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro, Serbia, and Macedonia, with little attention to where borders were drawn. These six autonomous republics became regions where ethnic groups with conflicting cultural beliefs existed within the same border, creating a tense ethnic climate. Nearing the end of the Cold War, after years of economic and social stability, opportunities arose for nationalistic ideology to gain traction in Yugoslavia, led by the Serb ethnic group. The Serbs, the largest ethnic group in Yugoslavia, sought to unite their vast population throughout Yugoslavia to attain power and follow the historic ideology of a greater Serbia. These Orthodox Christians felt as if the Muslim ethnic group didn't fit into their vision of a greater Serbia. With a failing economy and rumors of ethnic conflict arising, the republics of Croatia and Slovenia officially seceded from Yugoslavia in 1991. Seeing this, many in Bosnia, including the persecuted Bosniaks or Bosnian Muslims, viewed secession as a reality, seeking to escape religious persecution by the Serb-controlled Yugoslavian government. Though initially angered by this, the Serbian government, now led by the nationalistic Slobodan Milosevic, soon saw the opportunity to enact its plan of a greater Serbia by conquering Bosnia. As a part of this plan, Serbia annexed a part of Bosnia mainly populated by Serbs called Republika Srpska. The tension boiled over in the spring of 1992 when, by proxy, a Serbian-backed paramilitary invaded Bosnia and bordering parts of Croatia with a plan to remove Bosniaks from Bosnia. The army swept through cities, enacting their plan of ethnic cleansing by setting up concentration camps killing Muslim men and boys over the age of 12 and raping women. Along with this, the paramilitary seized the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo, securing power from Bosnia. A month after the initial invasion, the UN sanctioned Serbia for backing this group and set up six safe areas in cities throughout Bosnia. This decision to intervene came to fruition after disagreements over the role of the international community in domestic conflicts, neglecting the situation until it was too late. As three years of fighting carried on, UN policies were challenged between the traditional neutrality or siding with Bosnian Muslims. This haphazardness towards intervention left Bosnia vulnerable. This became apparent on July 6, 1995, when Bosnian Serb General Ratko Mladic led his army of 20,000 into Srebrenica, one of the UN-sanctioned safe areas. Only 200 Dutch peacekeepers were protecting the city, using expired ammunition and outdated gear, neglecting the magnitude of the situation. Mladic and his army shelled the city and burned buildings down. This genocidal act killed over 8,000 Bosniaks, many of which were under the age of 16. Scenes of this tragedy were broadcast throughout the world, prompting intervention from NATO. This was a precedent for the organization as they had a prior policy of only assisting NATO member nations, and Bosnia was not a member. NATO, being led by the US, began a major bombing campaign targeting important Serb checkpoints. This bombing campaign put pressure on the Serbs to negotiate. After the shift in military momentum, the U.S. sent representatives to initiate negotiations. On September 14th, Chief U.S. Peace Negotiator Richard Holbrook assisted in reaching an agreement to end the siege of Sarajevo, setting up the framework for the final peace talks. 
Presidents of Croatia, Bosnia, and Serbia, along with delegates from the U.S., Russia, and several NATO nations, arrived at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. On November 1st, peace accord deliberations started at the nearby Hope Hotel. Holbrook strategically used the poor conditions of the hotel to quickly finish the talks. Over 21 days, Holbrook was able to keep the talks peaceful between countries with heavy conflict and tension. Holbrook presented the capabilities of the U.S. arsenal to accelerate the talks and ensure success. Towards the end of the negotiations, it seemed as if it was falling apart. However, at the 11th hour, Holbrook rose triumphant and was able to broker the deal by using contested land as incentive to finish the talks. The final agreement ended the bloody conflict that took 250,000 lives. The U.S. heavily invested in the implementation of the Dayton Agreement. President Clinton authorized shipment of 7,000 troops to Bosnia to keep peace. The U.S. spent over $1 billion in the implementation of the agreement attempting to spread democracy to the new nation. The agreement ended the violence and genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina and created a future for Bosnia. This agreement split Bosnia into two parts, the Muslim Croat Federation and the Serb-controlled Republic of Srpska. Additionally, it created a tripartite presidency to give a voice to each of the three ethnicities. Well, now Bosnia, Bosnia technically has three presidents um, for each national group, and they kind of take turns of who runs the country out of the given year. To keep the peace, the agreement ensured that the ceasefire continued, artillery was withdrawn, and NATO forces, known as I-4, occupied the contested Bosnia. However, this new Bosnia created by the Accords had many problems. Many parties, including Holbrook, disagreed with giving the Serbs Bosnian land as it appeared to reward genocide. The tripartite presidency also created a stagnate executive system. While I-4 occupied Bosnia and enforced peace, no solutions were put forth to repair ethnic divisions in the rest of former Yugoslavia. In the eyes of the international community, the Dayton Accords were a triumph of diplomacy as they were able to get warring parties together to end the violence. So anything that sort of stopped the bloodshed um, in that part of the world was, to me, um, you know, a huge accomplishment. However, the Dayton Accords created a tragedy of neglect in Kosovo as it wasn't a comprehensive plan for all parties involved in the Yugoslav separation. In 1999 in Kosovo, ethnic tension between the Kosovo Albanians and the Serbs was rising, similar to Bosnia. While the Dayton Accords had attempted to enforce peace between the Serbs and Bosniaks, it ignored the situation between the Serbs and Kosovo Albanians. Tensions turned to conflict when fighting broke out between these parties, leading to a mass refugee crisis. Over one million Kosovars left to escape the violence and were displaced from their homes. NATO used their military intervention following Srebrenica as precedent to more quickly intervene, ending the immediate crisis in Kosovo. This early intervention by NATO prevented a second genocide in Kosovo. We act to protect thousands of innocent people in Kosovo from a mounting military offensive. We act to prevent a wider war, to defuse a powder keg at the heart of Europe that has exploded twice before in this century with catastrophic results. The Srebrenica precedent cemented NATO's permanent shift in strategy and power in the global community and has been used to justify NATO military peacekeeping intervention in the Libyan Civil War. In this situation, NATO used their power attempting to promote democracy in the conflicted country. Critics of NATO intervention questioned the legitimacy of the operations. Amnesty International has said, NATO forces violated the laws of war leading to cases of unlawful killing of civilians. Though NATO's intervention in conflicts has been the last step in toppling oppressive rule, a blueprint for the future in Bosnia Kosovo, and Libya was rushed, leading to further instability. 
This can be seen in Bosnia as the needs of the citizens were neglected in the Dayton Accords, not allowing Bosnians to properly heal and build a new nation.